Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Norm, Baltimore. New York is one of the most unequal places in the world. The most recent census data reveals income inequality in Manhattan is on par with Nambia and Sierra Leone. Amid record homelessness and the highest rent in the city's history, activists say two recent decisions demonstrate how housing policies play a significant role in exacerbating such disparities. A panel appointed by New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg voted for a rent increase of at least 4% for nearly 1 million city tenants in rent-regulated apartments, the largest such increase adopted since the financial crisis of 2008. Meanwhile, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo just put into law massive tax breaks for millionaires buying luxury condos under a program intended for low-income housing. Now joining us to talk about the la these latest developments is Jaron Benjamin, Executive Director of the Metropolitan Council on Housing, New York's oldest tenant union. Before joining the organization, he was the AIDS Housing Network Coordinator at Vocal New York and active in the group Men Against Violence. Thank you so much for joining us, Jaron. Hey, thanks for having me. So Jaron, what's your reaction to these two latest decisions? Um, as we mentioned in our introduction, um, they come at a time of record homelessness and already the highest rents New York City has ever seen. It's unacceptable. And, uh, and if the mayor and the state legislature is serious about, uh, about ending homelessness, about making sure the people that live in New York City and New York State have a place to sleep at night comfortably, uh, they can't keep doing this. And can you break down, uh, let's start with the, uh, with the decision by Andrew Cuomo. Um, what exactly does it mean that um, there's these tax breaks are going to millionaires who want to buy condos? Yeah, so uh, it's, it's actually a pretty tricky situation. The mayor, uh, even though he doesn't have a vote in the state legislature, typically does things like this. He supports, uh, he, su he supports legislation uh, that gives real estate a big shot in the arm. Jaron, for our international audience, can you talk about New York's mayor, Michael Bloomberg, and just like, quickly give us a little bit about his background? Yeah, so Mayor Bloomberg uh, is is one of the richest men in the world, uh, and it's only gotten he's only gained money and power since since becoming mayor. Uh, I, I think the estimate is that he was worth five billion dollars before coming mayor, uh, and just recently he uh, he checked in at at net worth of I think twenty billion dollars. And, uh, and yeah, and so to so continue on how his policies have affected uh, rent and uh, development in New York. Right. So the policies uh, that, that Mayor Bloomberg has either pushed for in Albany uh, or, or enacted as mayor of New York City has done nothing but drive uh, uh, low middle income people further and further out of the city. Uh, there was a there was a, a report released today uh, that shows that over the last 12 years, which Somehow, Mayor Bloomberg suspended term limits and was able to serve for a third term after after uh, winning another election uh, most recently. Uh, but but studies have shown that since that you know in the last twelve years, uh, lower income people are living further and further away from the city and further and further away from their jobs, and that has uh, that has real impact on people's lives. And um, also the uh, decision by the uh, panel appointed by the mayor to increase um, rent in rent regulated apartments. Who exactly lives in these apartments and what impact? It's just a 4% increase, but what impact is that 4% going to have? Right. Well, that's a really good question. I think, uh, I think it's really important to dispel a lot of the myths. Uh, uh, the myth seems to be that rich people uh, live in rent regulated apartments or you know and and it's only rich people but just just to give you the landscape nearly half of the rental units in New York City uh, in all five boroughs are rent regulated uh, and the average income for a household uh, of a re rent regulated tenant is about thirty seven thousand uh, dollars and those folks are paying more than a third of their income towards rent uh, and by federal definitions that's that's severely rent burden, which means, you know, they're sometimes uh, a paycheck away from being homeless. So that's a big chunk of, of New York City, of, of the neighborhoods of people that have lived here for so long. Uh, and 
And those are folks that can't afford a 4% increase uh, for one year lease or a 7.75% increase for a two year lease. Uh, you know, that, you know, that's, that's, they can't, they can't sustain that. What exactly do you mean that they can't sustain it? Can you put this in the context of the economy in New York City right now? Right. So more and more people with the economy sagging uh, have turned to jobs just to get a job uh, that pays hourly. So if you have to commute further and further away from your house or if you live further and further away from work, that cuts into your wages. Uh, so literally, people, uh, people cannot afford uh, these kinds of increases uh, and can't afford to be shuffled out further uh, away from their jobs, away from the city, any more than they already have. Uh, you know, being a paycheck away from being homeless means that getting sick at a place where, it does, you know, where you don't have paid sick leave, uh, that means that you're in danger of losing your apartment. Uh, and, and we're talking about, uh, about a million rent-regulated units, uh, which is 2.5 uh, sorry, 2.5 million people in New York. And um, on the issue of the tax breaks for um, essentially millionaires who are buying condos, um, is there a link between the tax breaks and uh, campaign contributions that you found? Yeah, absolutely. We uh, met Council on Housing, uh, collaborated with, uh, with the Center for Working Families and Common Cause uh, to produce a study uh, that showed a direct link between uh, the wealthy real estate developers that benefited from this tax break and uh, and the legislators that voted for it, and there's a direct link. They were giving uh, they were giving money to the legislators, and the legislators in turn voted for this bill. And in their defense, they would say that's totally legal. Um, some of the other uh, responses I've seen is that you know uh, fuel prices are going up; it's costing more to maintain these buildings in New York. What's your response to to these kind of uh, reactions? So our response is, you know, follow the money and look at the numbers. Uh, landlords in New York City have reported uh, fewer expenses than the city has given them credit for. Landlords themselves say, I'm actually not spending as much money on fuel and oil or, uh, or repairs as the Department of Finance, which is controlled by Mayor Bloomberg, uh, is, is saying, well, this is how much we expect that, that to go up. They're actually reporting more money being gained. You know, they're, they're reporting more profits, which I think is, uh, you know, there were several people that were involved in the Rent Guidelines Board process uh, that have never been people to call for either a rent freeze or for a rent reduction. Uh, you know, I wouldn't, you know, they probably wouldn't consider themselves radical, uh, but when they took a close look at the numbers, uh, they they all agreed that that a rent hike this year meant that, you know, Mayor Bloomberg does not care about the working poor. He doesn't care about low income people. He doesn't care about the middle class. All he cares about is having uh, what he called uh, a luxury product in New York City. I want to read you a quote from The New York Daily News about this bill that just passed, um, giving tax breaks to essentially millionaires to buy uh, luxury condos. Um, it says, quote, the bill singled out five developments to make them eligible for tax breaks, which would cost the city tens of millions of dollars in property taxes. Give me your response to that. So uh, right now in New York City, uh, a lot of my friends who are activists uh, across many different uh, sectors, whether it's the, the healthcare sector whether it's the housing sector or, or what have you, or whether it's the sector that, that works with people that live with, with disabilities, uh, everybody's getting cut right now. Everybody's losing money. And the city keeps saying, we don't have money. We just don't have money for your programs. Meanwhile, they are uh, uh, very, very willing to dole out uh, tens of millions of dollars in tax breaks for the wealthy. So really, it's about choices. It, the Mayor Bloomberg and the state legislature have, have chosen to, to give tax breaks to the wealthy at the expense of, of low-income people and people who rely on programs. Finally, uh, Bloomberg is in the last year of his 12 years uh, in office. Um, is there hope that 
things can change under his successor? Absolutely. Uh, we're at a very critical time right now in New York City. Uh, homeless numbers in New York has, you know, home, the amount of homeless New Yorkers has never been so high. Under Mayor Bloomberg, they have effectively doubled. I think it was about 25,000 people sleeping in the shelters when he took office 12 years ago. And now there are more than 50,000 people uh, sleeping in the shelters. Uh, and that's that's not including people who have been displaced by Sandy. Uh, and it's not including people that are sleeping on the streets uh, because there's, there's no room in the shelter. Uh, so really... I think with the with the with the new mayor who is willing to to uh, to make affordable housing a priority to make you know the other 99% of of New Yorkers a priority uh, that can definitely happen. We really need someone to step up and to save our our rent laws that that really keep a lot of neighborhoods in place. If we don't if we don't have that, then rents will continue to skyrocket. Uh, homeless people will continue, you know, the homeless number will continue to rise. Uh, uh, some people don't, some people forgot about this, but Mayor Bloomberg had a, had an infamous policy for dealing with, with homelessness a few years ago, uh, where they would offer a one-way ticket out of town, uh, either by bus or by plane to a homeless person or to a homeless family, uh, provided they could, that they could show that they could live on their own outside of New York City. So that's basically what Mayor Bloomberg wants to do and has done, uh, is just evict uh, people that can't afford to live here. Uh, and I think a new mayor uh, who's not, who's not going to make that their policy, uh, it can really affect some change. Jaron Benjamin, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll certainly keep following this story. All right, thanks so much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.